opportunities to just come to praise and worship God. So please may we all be on our feet as we go into a special time of praise. You can see you're about to do something really special. So just open your hearts today to receive from God and allow him to minister to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
about the song, I Give Myself Away. It's quite to see that sometimes, sometimes we sing songs and we sing songs and we sing songs and we sing songs. But until you ask the Holy Spirit to really open your mind and just explain to you what you're singing, only then will you know the true meaning and a song that you've been singing for so long, a song that you've been singing for so long becomes a ministration. What does it mean to give yourself away? What does it mean to give your life away? Our Bible study, we were talking about how we die. We die daily. We die to flesh daily. We die daily. And what the Holy Spirit just said to me, to give yourself away means to give your thoughts away. To give your wants away. To give your desires away. To give your body away. To give your life away. As in, this person just insulted me right now. In like knowing who I am, I want to insult you back. But the Holy Spirit says, Don't. I give my desires away. I give, as in the things of this world no longer move me. I give my desires away. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away. Let's just begin to pray that God will help us to give ourselves away, to, to listen. Away. When the Holy Spirit tells us to so do things that may seem hard, when the Holy Spirit tells us to do things that we don't want to do, that we will give ourselves away. And it may look like, because I'm saying it now, it may look like I have it all figured out, but I promise you I don't. It's not easy. It's not easy. But the Bible says the flesh profits nothing. So let's just begin to pray that Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, teach me how to give myself away. Holy Spirit, teach me how to succumb to your will. God, is not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy, God. It's not easy. Let's just begin to pray. Speak to your Father. Speak to your Maker. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I will pray as you pray. Holy Spirit, just teach me. Holy Spirit from the bottom of my heart to give myself away God is not easy it's not easy to give myself away sometimes my flesh wants to do what it wants to do but Spirit of the Living God begin to do a work in my heart in this moment begin to do a work in the hearts of everyone standing here in this moment in the mighty name of Jesus let's just begin to pray for our Thanksgiving service let's just begin to give thanks because today is our Thanksgiving service and even Tying back to Thanksgiving, the best way, the best way to thank someone is to show them with your actions, is to show them with your life. So if you're praying that God teach me how to give myself away, that's the best way you can say thank you to God. We're thankful for life, we're thankful for breath, we're thankful for clothes, we're thankful for graduations, we're thankful for marriages, we're thankful for children, we're thankful for so many things. But the best way to say thanks, the best way to say thanks, even to your friends, in your relationships, you know. The best way to say thanks, to say we your actions. So God, teach us how to give ourselves away. And if you know how to speak in tongues, let's just pray in tongues for five minutes. If you don't, just continue to speak to your maker. Tell him to teach you how to give yourself away. The Bible says whatever you ask in his name, he will give. Whatever you ask in his name, you will give. So just begin to speak to God. God, we know by our own power we are nothing. By our own power we can do nothing. God teach us how to give ourselves away. So we can give you true thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can we just give the choir an applause and just thank you so much Favolina. thank you Munachi for that amazing session that was amazing thank you so much amen amen so welcome 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 guys welcome 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 i know i'm not the minister for today 
but I just feel led to still say, like, we should really all just go home. And I'm talking to myself right now as well. We should really all just go home. To those sitting here before me in the congregation, to those watching me online, love you guys. Just go home and really ask yourself, what does it mean to give yourself away? What does it mean to sit at the feet of Jesus? What does it mean to thank him with your life? Because today we're here to thank God, but really and truly, like, if you, tell some, if you tell someone thank you, like if I come to you and say thank you, thank you, thank you, and my friend said this at a prayer like session, if you come to someone and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, if I come to you and like thank you, thank you, thank you, you'll be like, for what? Like, what did I do? You need to be intentional, and you need to show that what this person has done means a lot to you. And so you use, we use our lives as Christians to say thank you to God for all the things that he has done for us. So I just wanted to leave that with you guys. But welcome, 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 welcome to the Builder's Service. Are we excited to be here this afternoon? Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. God bless you all. Um, so I just want to say welcome to those online, to those sitting here. Thank you so much to our instrumentalists. Can we give them a round of applause? That was amazing, guys. Um, yeah, but if this is your first time here, can I please see a wave of hands? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please, if you're around a newcomer, please say welcome to them. Show them our builders' love. So our builders, we are participants and not spectators, and we are so glad that you're here to worship with us today. We pray that God will bless you and minister to you throughout this service. Um, so today, there's going to be a QR code behind me, and you can scan that and fill out your information. But today's our Thanksgiving service. Is anybody excited? Amen. So I was just told to let you guys know that during the service, there's going to be a Slido link um, where you can put in your testimonies. And so please feel free to share what God has done for you. Feel free to show your thanks by giving thanks. Amen. Amen. I pray that we all enjoy the service in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. I appreciate Jesus once more. I just need to thank him. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me let's sing it one more time you are my strength strength like no other strength like no other reaches to me You are my hope, hope like no other, hope like no other, reaches to me. How many of you believe Jesus is your strength this morning? Amen. You don't sound like it. Is Jesus Christ your strength? Are you tired? Are you tired of running? Have you been running? Praise the Lord. I'd like you to stand up and say hi to one or two persons. Just greet on someone. Love on them. Tell them how wonderful they look. Ask them about their week. Praise the Lord. And after you've done that, you may have your sit. Heavenly Father, we thank you.
we thank you, Lord God, for your, for your light, for your love, for your grace and your mercy that are new every morning. Lord God, we just want to say we're grateful to be in your presence once more. And Lord God, we hold on to the promise that you say wherever we are gathered in your name, there you are in our, in, in our midst. And we say, welcome, Jesus Christ. Welcome, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word that shall go forth this afternoon. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm not... Amen. That's for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Um, my, my assignment here this morning is, is brief. My name is Emeka, and I'm sure Faye has done a wonderful job in welcoming our first-timers. Um, we are the Beulah's Church of Jesus House Scarborough, the youth arm, essentially. And uh, in case you're wondering what's going on, that's, that's what we're doing here. We're having fellowship, and uh, we meet every Sunday at 1.30. So you're welcome, if this is your first time. We're happy to have you amongst us. Amen. And I was using that to stall because I locked myself out of my phone, and... Um, I didn't have access to what I was about to share with us. Psalms chapter 121. Technical, if you can help me. Psalms 121. The Bible says, please, can we be upstanding for the reading of God's word? Praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 121. And it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. How many of you are glad that your help comes from God and not from man? Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Your help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Let's look at verse 1 again. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. Verse 2. My help comes from CRA. My help comes from my manager. My help comes from Pastor Phillips. Is that a Pastor Tolu's name I'm seeing there? No. My help comes from who? The Lord. Who made what? Who made a stool? Who made a chair? Who made what? The heavens and the earth. Your help comes from the creator of the whole universe. That's the kind of God you serve. That's the kind of God that you worship. And your help is coming from him. Praise the Lord. You may be sitting in the house of God. I want to talk about real quickly about a very special person in the Bible. And my, my exhortation for this morning is called, Lift Up Your Eyes. Lift Up Your Eyes. And I want to talk about Joseph. You know, a lot of things and a lot of sermon is preached on Joseph. And for good reason. Joseph was um, a very interesting character. Now, Joseph had a dream. And out of excitement, he goes to his brother and his father. And the dream was, was quite simple. He had sheets, and each sheet that represented his brothers and one that represented him, and then something strange began to happen with them. And his brother's sheets started to bow down to his own. And he goes to his brothers, and he tells them, he tells them another dream that he had. And in that dream, the sun and the moon and the stars were bound to who? To Joseph. Immediately, some of us may look at this and like, this guy may have something going on with him. Like, a bit arrogant much. But he was sincere with his dream. And in our own lives, we do have dreams. How many of you have dreams? and ambitions, things that you are so sure that God has put into your heart. How many of you have shared it with someone? 
How many of you are too afraid to share it with someone? How many of you are not even sure of the dream? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I, I empathize with that, right? You know, there are things that God puts in your heart to do. And many are times, you're not even certain what it's about. But that wasn't the case with Joseph. Joseph was fully convinced about the thing that God had put in his heart. And he goes to the people that he thought would cheer him on the most. His kinfolk. And what did he, what did he receive? His father rebuked him. Keep in mind, the Bible talks about how Joseph was... The, he was the favorite child. He was the baby of the house. It wasn't even Benjamin. Benjamin was the last born. How many of you are last born here? You know you can be a last born and not be the baby of the house. I mean, that's, that sounds foreign to you. Joseph was the baby of the house. His father loved him so much that the Bible says in King James that he made him a coat of many colors, a special tunic specifically for Joseph. And there was clearly a good relationship there. So Joseph goes to his father and tells him about his dreams. And what did his father do? His father rebukes him. Praise the Lord. His father rebukes him and says, what is this thing you said? But the Bible says he also kept it to his heart. There are things that God has put in you that you are so convinced that people will have a buy into. But you are limiting God with your thoughts. Joseph's dream was not for his father or his brothers to fulfill. Praise the Lord. There is a vision God has given to you. And the first thing some of you may be thinking about is, Oh, um, my friend Ophir will support me. Deborah will support me. Samuel will support me. But then, you are putting the, the dependencies of the actualization on your dreams on people. What did we read in our memory verse? It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Your help wasn't coming from the hills. Praise the Lord. Your help does not come from people. Your help comes from God. So maybe God has put something in your heart or some, some assignment that you had and you've gone to share it with someone and you feel, and it's not as though the person is not excited. Maybe a business idea and you go and I'm like, eh, I'm not quite seeing it. And you become discouraged. You know, I, I once, uh, one of my father in law once said uh, uh, um, some years back, said unless a dream has taken a hold of you as much as you can die for it, then you don't quite believe in it. Praise the Lord. If the conviction is there, it should be enough to rise above discouragement. Amen. Well, Joseph has a dream. He tells it to his brothers. His brothers despised him for it. His father rebukes him. He goes about his business. And out of envy, he comes one day to... Um, where his brothers were taking care of his father's flock on assignments from his father. And he goes there and they plot against him. They capture him. They put him in a pit. And eventually they sell, they sell him off to, um, to slivers from Egypt. And Joseph goes to Potiphar's house and becomes essentially the second in command in Potiphar's house in a place that was not of his kinfolk, in a place that he knew nobody, God is taking someone here to a place where they have no, no one and God's about to promote you in that place. God is taking you to somewhere where you, you can't even speak the language. You don't understand the lingo. You don't know how the, the culture goes about. But God is about to promote you in that place. 
it doesn't take men. It doesn't take that level of familiarity to get that level of promotion. But the spirit of excellence rested on Joseph. The spirit of diligence rested on Joseph. That so much so as a slave, he was able to rise to the point of authority. When we're looking at our Sunday school this morning, um, one of the verses we read was in Proverbs. And it speaks about how wisdom makes the face of a hard man glow. That's a paraphrase. There is a glory that seeps out of you when you have the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of diligence. When you are very adept at things. The Bible says a man's gift, although he was talking about a different kind of gift, makes room for him. There's a spirit of excellence that can fall on you that is undeniable. And that was what was upon the life of Joseph. Joseph goes into Potiphar's house, a slave. And so much, so excellent was he that he became desirous of his master's wife. We're not praying for that kind of anointing. But there was something in Joseph that spoke that made people around him respond. Of course, we know the story. He was framed in a reverse Me Too movement scenario. And um, he goes to jail. And in jail, Joseph becomes the leader of pretty much everything else again as well. There's a pattern here. Geography does not impede on anointing. Location does not impede on God's gifting on your life. As long as you stay diligent to it. Keep in mind, before he rose to the level he rose, both in Potiphar's house and in the jail, he hadn't interpreted one dream. Praise the Lord. His gift was what? Interpreting dreams. But it wasn't that gift that got him to the places of promotion. It was his diligence. It was the anointing of excellence in him. So it, it doesn't necessarily matter where you are. God's spirit of excellence can so fall on you that it shows forth regardless. Praise the Lord. You may be working a job that is not what you study in school. Amen. You may be in a place that you never expected. But when the spirit of excellence is on you, it's going to show forth at some point. And then the opportunity came. And he had the opportunity to interpret the dreams of two of Pharaoh's very important men. One went to the, uh, was executed, and the other one was returned to, um, to, to Potiphar's, to, to Pharaoh's court. It so happened that Pharaoh then had a dream. And, um, and Pharaoh's butler, who was, whose dream had been interpreted and restored back into, into his place, he remembered he remembered someone that was in jail that was completely and utterly insignificant. You have to also understand Joseph's position in that, in that type of society. He was a Jew. Jews were second class according to the Egyptians. He was someone of no repute. But the butler remembered the gift that Joseph had manifested. Your excellence will speak for you where you have no voice. Does someone believe that? Your excellence will speak for you where you have no voice. Joseph's excellence spoke for him in the presence of the king. And then he came and he, he interpreted the king's dream. And what happened? The wisdom of God spoke on him. He showed great wisdom, great skill. And then who did God, who did Pharaoh appoint to be the governor of, of Egypt? Joseph. A man's gift makes room for him. But all the while, Praise the Lord. All the while, um, 
Joseph stayed true to his convictions. There was no compromise in the house of Potiphar. There was no compromise in the prison. There was no compromise even when he came into power. You do not need to compromise to live out your dreams. You do not need to compromise to live out the calling of God in your life. And the reason I say this is because, as our opening text says, our eyes are fixed on the one who made the heavens and the earth. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Tim. Our eyes are fixed on the one who, makes the heaven, who made the heavens and the earth. The story didn't end there. Joseph's brothers came after the famine had hit, hit the whole land. And they came looking for food. And there was a whole dramatic story of the reconciliation. But I would like us to see something. Genesis chapter 50 from verse 15 as we round up. Genesis chapter 50 from verse 15. Amen. It says, And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. Remember, Joseph had actually already forgiven them. And that takes courage. Praise the Lord. They sold him off to slavery. It doesn't get worse than that. That's the type of backstabbing that you have to live with. He was fully aware that his brothers despised him as much as selling him into slavery. Perhaps there might even be more dignity in them killing him. But they despised him that much that they wanted to take money out of his life and condemn him to a life of slavery. But Joseph had to forgive. Praise the Lord. Carrying a grudge doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help you. It doesn't help the person you're carrying the grudge for. But they themselves didn't realize Joseph had actually forgiven him. And it continues. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, Before your father died, he commanded saying, they were lying. Thus shall you say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and, and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of God of your, of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Verse 18. Since then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. So Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am, in the place, for am I in the place of God. But as for you, what you meant for evil, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. I want you to stand to your feet. What the enemy meant for good in your life, God is turning it around, meant for bad in your life, God is turning it around for good. How many of you believe that? I want you to proclaim it over yourself. That every terrible situation in your life, that God is turning it around for good. Because as you fix your eyes on him, the Bible says, keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. As you lift your eyes, not to the hills, not to the hills, because that's not where your help is coming from, not to people, not to situation. But you're lifting your eyes to God. What the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for good in your life in the name of Jesus. 
and there shall be a cost to testify. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For what the enemy meant for good, you've turned, went for bad, you've turned for good in our lives. And so shall it ever be in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Can anyone guess what time it is? Testimony time. There's no response for that. Testimony time. Some people said blessings, some people said overcomers. Testimony time. I guess it's a win. Please, you may have your seats. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emeka. That was very. If you were blessed, please give God a round of applause. So, as we've all established, it's now time for testimonies. Um, I just wanted to quickly share um, the reason why we give our testimonies. So, like in First Peter verse chapter three, verse fifteen to sixteen, it basically it basically speaks to um, why we should share our testimonies, and not even just in terms of what God has done in our life, but in terms of who God is, right? Um, when we share our testimony, what we essentially do is that we bring a piece of heaven to earth, right? And it's also very important to make sure that we're encouraging other people. So I used to think about it like this. Like if when you don't share your testimony, it's basically you kind of like taking credit for what God has done. And a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't share my testimony because I'm not shy. Babes, it's not about you. <laughs> it's literally about God and about like the person that will be touched through your testimony. Okay okay all right so please um if you have any testimonies feel free to share you can also scan the qr code where you can text your um text your testimonies and we can read them if you want to stay anonymous but if there's anyone that wants to give their testimony you can please just wave your hand remember it's not for you it's for god i guess first we'll have faith Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Faye. I've been informed I have two minutes, so I'll not take your time. Um, I just want to give God all the glory because my graduation is tomorrow. But I also want to thank God because in this season, I've really been asking him to just kind of show me myself. And brothers and sisters, it has been tough, but the prayer has been answered. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen, thank God. If you know your gra if, if anyone is graduating this season, this year, can you just please give us a wave? All right, all right. Can we give them a round of applause? Congratulations in advance. That's amazing, that's amazing. Is there anyone else that wants to share? Remember, you can always um, scan the QR code and send it to Slido so that we can read it anonymously. While we're waiting for you know someone to speak up, you guys, we have limited time. Well, not the one that in the last minutes everybody's hand now be up. Okay, we have another person that wants to share. Um, praise God, everyone. I was contemplating whether to share it or not, but I really just want to thank God for His faithfulness. And um, I mean, my last semester doing human resource, I'm also graduating. Yeah, I want to give. God all the glory because he has saw me through. So currently I'm volunteering at the place where I didn't expect that I was going to be, to have the opportunity to and it was Pastor Toluade that linked me up with the person and I was supposed to do my co-op. I got the position but by the time I told the school, the school was like hey, you cannot do it anymore. They were giving me stories. And for weeks, I was down. I was unhappy. And I kept coming to church. I kept coming to Bible study. And um, somehow, my spirit got lifted. And so, I just want to thank God because currently, I am volunteering there. And as an HR personnel, Normally, they don't allow people to volunteer in their HR personnel, but God gave me, he favored me, 
and I've just been receiving favor. Anytime I have questions, they are willing to answer. Anytime I have concerns, they will tell me, don't, don't be shy to ask. Whatever you don't understand, we will put you through. And it's been an amazing experience. So I just want to thank God. Praise God. Thank God. Can we please give God a round of applause? Do it for a It's like you don't want your own testimony. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to read a couple, and then if there's anyone that wants to give, we can please flag Israel. Um, so here, someone said, thankful for the spirit of God that is present in TBC. Today, I am reminded of where my help comes from, God, and my troubled mind is at peace. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Um, someone said, I was able to enroll for a course that was very stressful to pick. Secondly, God answered my prayer about getting a bus quickly and miraculously a few days ago. No, honestly, you guys, I want to comment about this one specifically because I feel like there are a lot of like little, little things that I like favor. That's the word that like God just favors me for. And I pray that may God favor you in the little things and the huge things. Amen. Amen. So we're going to take one person that will continue with the sliding. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to say thank you to God for provision and also for favor. So I was looking for a co-op job, I think, for, for next semester. And then I was feeling overwhelmed going into the application process. But I just want to thank God that I applied for my first job. I got an interview and two hours later they gave me the offer. And I just want to thank God. And thank you for provision and for joy, even in this season. And for the things that he's teaching me. Thank God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If you're looking for a job, your clap should be the loudest, though. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, someone said, I thank God for my life and for bringing me back to his presence. Can we just give God a round of applause? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone said, um, thank you, God, for the amazing godly friends he has surrounded me with, um, who always prayed. Sorry. Okay, thank, thanking God for the amazing um, godly friends he has surrounded me with. Wink, wink, builders. Um, I've always prayed for godly relationships and I'm grateful. Can we give God a round of applause? Amen, amen. That's just a side testimony. I just want to give my own testimony because I have amazing friends and I love you guys. All of builders, of course. <laughs> um, someone said... I'm thankful to God for divine provision for me and my family. I thank God for builders because they make me feel like I have a family. Love you. Love you too. Love you too. <laughs> Someone said, um, was job searching for an internship for three months. God blessed me. Not with one, but two jobs. Amen. 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 I tap into that in Jesus' name. So I'm going to let Osas Ray go and then we'll continue. Sending your testimonies. Remember when, I don't know, I'm, the scripture is not coming to mind, but the scripture about how like God blessed someone, they didn't give thanks, and then they turned to a curse. You know the whole shoe, you know, we don't want none of that. Amen? Amen. 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 Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm studying for a really important test. Oh, I'm graduating on Tuesday. That's my um, But uh, God has given me the privilege of telling me where I'm supposed to go. So I've been studying for a test, and it's very difficult, but I just want to thank the life of Mimi because she sent me another program, because I'm doing a program to study for the test, um, but Mimi sent me another program that's free, that's more accommodating to my schedule, and um, I just get to continue to work because I didn't know how I was going to continue to study after the program I'm doing now was done, um, but God made a way. So. <laughs> Okay, we'll have you go next as well. Clap, so you receive your own testimony. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, my name is Amara. So I was doing my A level program, and I think I had just two weeks to leave the US, basically. And I was not aware of it. I thought I was going to stay there. So it was not planned. I was stranded. I had nowhere to go. I called my parents and they were like, oh, what would you do? And I did not want to stay with anybody, like my aunties or uncle. So basically, I had nowhere to go. Then I remember praying, like I was crying profusely because like, I was so devastated. I, like, I was literally stranded. So I was just crying and praying to God. And 
I got an offer for a place to stay. Actually, two places, so I get to choose which one I like. So I just want to thank God for everything. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I tap into that testimony because I want to move as well. Amen. Amen. Someone said, um, I'm grateful for God's... I'm grateful for God's favor at my co-op job. It has been so unreal. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, this person said, I would like to thank God for enabling me to make strides in my career and get a promotion at work. God consistently guides me in my career, and I'm very grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On that note, I'd also like to share, I got a promotion at work a couple of months ago. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You guys, like, I feel like as people are, are giving their testimonies, like I already mentioned earlier, that's the whole point of sharing. Not because we're, like, whatever testimony is makes you better than someone else that's praying for that, but it's an opportunity for someone else to tap into that blessing and tap into that grace and also be encouraged. Because I feel like sometimes you hear people's testimony and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I was praying for that before. Maybe you were praying for it for a while and you just hadn't gotten it yet. It's a reminder for you to go back to continue praying for that thing because God is listening and he's mindful of you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God another round of applause. <laughs> Amen. Where else, where else? I think we've gone through everything on the slide. Oh. I'm sorry? One is pending? Okay, one is coming. Is there anyone else in the auditorium that would like to give your testimony? We are almost done with this time. You missed my Give us the real deal in person. Right. Give us the tea. So I'm thankful for um, God's light in every area of my life. It's, it's hard doing life when you're, when you're directionless, when you don't know what to do next. So I started to pray around like my career. I currently love what I do, but it's like, what's next? I'm bored right now. <laughs> so what's next? So I started to pray and then God's light has been very you know, powerful in that regard. So I know literally the job title to go for. So it's like, Amazing direction. So glory to God for that. Amen. 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 Is there anyone else that wants to give their test their testimony? Hmm, that's factor. Um, or they want to give a testimony in faith, because that's also a thing that wants to speak into their fa their future. You know. Is there anyone else? You guys, the time is going. The time is going. Is there anyone else? Going once, going twice. Amen. So, that was actually the, that was actually the first time I've heard that. And God just dropped it in my heart to say it. So, um, I do plan, so, so I do plan on starting my own business really soon. And the thing is that I do not, uh, it's, it's just something that God gave me. I do not know, I do not know what that's going to be. I don't know the plan. And I don't even know how I'm going to start. So this is me speaking into my feet. That by in six to eight months, something is, something's going to happen. Um, I don't know what, I don't know how, but I'm trusting God and I believe that he's going to make it happen. Amen. 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 Can we give God a round of applause? Amen. Amen. Please let us know so we can, if we can afford it, so that we can, you know. Amen. Can we give God another round of applause? Amen. Amen. We have, okay, go on, go on. Um, sorry, just when she mentioned giving a testimony in faith, I just want to give a testimony in faith. I thank you so much, David, for putting a timeline on it because I also felt that I should also add a timeline to mine. I just want to thank God in faith because in the next two to three months, I'm going to have my dream job. Yeah. Even, though, even though I don't know what my dream job is, I thank God because he will let me know what the dream Amen. job is and I'll have the job and by God's grace. Maybe I will sponsor dinner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you people, who wants dinner? Go and start praying for our sister. Oh. Start praying for our sister. Oh. Amen. 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 I thank God that I got into med school. 
Amen. 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 God, God bless you. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you. Can we just give God a round of applause? Just, I just, I just want to highlight how, like, as builders, we have talent, we have brains, we have beauty. That's a testimony. Amen. 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 Okay. So my time is up, it's in the red, and I'm going to leave now. I just want us to say a quick 30-second prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for these testimonies. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege, the opportunity to be able to come and give thanks to you. And we give you all the glory and adoration. We plead the blood of Jesus over every single testimony that has been given today in the past, in the present, and even in the future, we give you all the glory and adoration. We pray that everything that you have given us today and tomorrow, it shall be permanent in Jesus' name. And for all the people that genuinely desire to give a testimony but don't have it yet or don't know what it is, we ask that, Lord, you will give them abundantly in Jesus' name. And just as we're giving our testimony today, everyone that came out to give their testimony will come out again and again and again. And everyone that didn't have the opportunity yet to come out, they will come back and they will give thanks to your name in Jesus' name name. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And let all the glory and adoration be given unto you in the end, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to go now. Bye, guys. So the audio visual will just help us to put um, the channels to give, give at iccgjesushouse.ca. You can also thank God in your giving, thank him for what he has done in your life. And as we do that, we'll just do like some quick praise. Are you guys ready to dance today? I can't feel the excitement. Are you ready to dance today? Yeah. Amen. So yeah, please give and may we be on our feet as we go into
we done? Thank you so much, instrumentalists and the builders' worship. How many of us agree that the best place to party is in the house of God? I don't know about you, but this is the real deal. Praising God. I don't know if you felt the joy I felt. Praising our Heavenly Father. Praise God. Please have your seat. My name is Deborah and I'm here to give the announcement. Uh, first, I would like to welcome every one of us. I hope we had a great time in the presence of God today. Just give me a wave if you enjoyed the service. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many people are worshipping with us for the very first time today? I know we asked earlier in the service, but maybe we had new people. Come on. Don't be shy. Praise God. And as many who are worshipping with us online, we also recognize your presence. We would like to have you here physically. Praise God. For the first time, worshippers, in case you were unable to scan the QR code, it is currently up. Please do so and fill the form. We would like to, you know, engage with you. Builders Church is not just a church. It is a community. It is a family. And we want you to be part of our family. So please fill the form and we will reach out to you. Our daily prayers... We have daily prayers during the week from Monday to Thursday at 7 p.m. Currently, yes, that's the Zoom ID on the screen. You can take a picture of it. Please be uh, present at one of the days. You can join Monday to Thursday if you have the time. But just make sure you... Oh, sorry. Okay. Just make sure you join the prayer. And if you have prayers... You can send your prayer request to prayers at rccgjesushouse.ca. It's better to just take a picture so you can have it on your phone. Volunteer. We would love to have you use your gifts in the field of your choice. There are different departments at Builders Church. And perhaps the one you want to join is not here. You can reach out to us by sending an email to builders at rccgjesushouse.ca telling us oh this is the department you have an idea about and we will reach out to you praise god um so if you want to volunteer in any of these departments please note that during your time of volunteering you will need to undergo our membership and workers in training class to be well equipped within your role if you have further inquiries please send an email to Builders at rccgjesushouse.ca Baptism, okay, believers slash baptismal class is starting, oh, it started today. So I guess you can still join next week. And um, you see that beautiful sister in purple? If you want to join the class, maybe you should wave so they can see. You can just speak to her about registration and she will give you the information you require. Men of impact, to all the men in the house, men in the house. Uh -uh. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the men now? <laughs> men in the house, oh, are you guys boys? We don't have boys here. <laughs> so men in the house, the annual conference is almost here. Mark your calendars for Friday, June 23rd to Sunday 25th for a life transforming weekend seemed bring me a new cruise that's what i see there okay prepare to be uplifted by insightful speakers engaging workshops and meaningful fellowship i know when they say men we tend to feel like maybe older as long as you're of the male gender you're a man so please do well to attend this program graduation service who is you're not excited. I thought, I thought some people were graduating. Great. So there's a graduation service. If you are a 2023 20, graduate high school or university or college, congratulations in advance. It is a big deal. The church would love to celebrate you. 
we are planning a graduation service for July 2nd. So mark your calendars, July 2nd. To help us plan accordingly, please indicate your interest before the end of today by scanning the QR code. Please scan the QR code and fill out the form. Someone will reach out to you. Praise God. BBC crew. BBC crew. Who knows what BBC is? Thank you. So Builders Bible Club. Join us every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. in this auditorium for the Bible study of the Builders Church. It is where we grow in our faith as we discuss and study the Word of God. See you there. Sunday service. I asked earlier how many of us had a wonderful time and I saw the hands up. I hope to see you guys next week Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Same time, same venue. And please come with a friend. Don't come alone. The blessing you received today, bring someone to come and enjoy that same blessing. You know, let's share it. That's the love Jesus was talking about. Love your neighbor as yourself. So do not come alone. Come with someone. And if you are unable to attend the person, we will be streaming on our YouTube at thebuilders.church the builders dot church on youtube so you can follow the service there so these are all the announcements we have for you today please remember to follow us on all our socials instagram tiktok and youtube at the builders dot church the builders dot church there's this um monday motivation that is usually posted on our instagram and i think tiktok please follow our socials there are some interesting content there and you will be blessed 2023 is our year of divine perfection may the lord perfect all that concerns you in jesus name so with this may we rise as we take the builders declaration one to go as a builder I am a part of one church, one body, and one spirit under Christ Jesus our Lord. I declare that I am the light of Christ, his worker, field and harvest. By his grace, I am empowered to build and not tear down, shining before men. Strengthened by his might, I can do anything. By his blood, I overcome adversity. I thrive in purity and excel in all things. I live with boldness and courage enemy has no hold on me by power of the holy spirit i walk in the will of god because he is the vine and i am his fruit praise god please remember to say hi to one or two people and build this community have a blessed week